Hello everyone and welcome to a new lecture. In this video we're going to talk about graph of sine and cosine. Okay, so how can we graph sine or cosine? Well, we're going to graph them the same way that we graph any function. So, first of all, we will start with the graph of sine of t. Sine of t. Okay, so when we make a distance on the circumference of the unit circle, so let's say t becomes, it goes from 0 to pi over 6, what happens to x, what happens to y? Okay, whatever happens to y is exactly what is happening to sine, and whatever is happening to x is exactly what is happening to cosine. Okay, so roughly speaking, so if I go, so this is 0, this is my initial point. If I go from 0 to pi over 2, okay, what happens to sine? So if t, if this is t, this is sine of t, this is cosine of t. Okay, so as t goes from 0 to pi over 2, my sine, so sine is the y component, as you can see, it goes from 0 to 1. It goes from 0 to 1. Okay, as I go from pi over 2 to pi, I go to pi, okay, my y component goes from 1 to 0. From 1 to 0. Okay, so let's see if we can grab this. Okay, so if this is 1, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is minus 1, okay? So I have to have these x coordinates, so I have to have 0, I have to have pi over 2, I have to have pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So this is 0, this is roughly pi over 2, this is pi, this is 3 pi over 2, and this is 2 pi. Okay? So as I go from 0 to pi over 2, so as I go from here to here, my value goes from 0 to 1. So I go from 0 to 1. Okay? So as I go from 0 to pi over 2, my y, okay, goes from 0 to 1. Okay, as I go from 0 to pi over 2, I go from 0 to 1. Okay, as x goes from pi over 2 to pi, so as I go from here to here, my y goes from 1 to 0, so it drops. So I come back like that. Okay, so let's see. So from here to here and from here to here, let's see from here to here. So as I go from pi to 3 pi over 2, so what happens to my y value? So the y value goes from 0 to minus 1. Okay, so as I go from pi to 3 pi over 2, my y value goes from 0 to minus 1. Okay, so as I go from pi to 3 pi over 2, my y value goes from 0 to minus 1. And as I go from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, my y value goes from here to here. As you can see, my y value from minus 1, it goes to 0. Okay, so from minus 1, it goes to 0. So it goes like that. Okay? So roughly speaking, this is what the graph of sine of x looks like. And you see how we found it. Okay? What happens if I go more than that? So I have went 2 pi. What happens if I add another pi over 2 to it? So I go a distance of 5 pi over 2. Okay? So if I go a distance of 5 pi over 2, so if I continue this and I go right here, okay, as you can see, again, I will go from y being 0 to y being 1. Okay, so I go like that again. And then if I come back from 5 pi over 2 to 6 pi over 2, which equals to 3 pi, okay, I come down. Okay, my y value goes from 1 to 0. Okay, so if you imagine I'll have... A motion like that I'll go up and down up and down up and down and then here I'll go up and down up and down up and down okay this is roughly speaking this is what the graph of sine of X looks like okay it goes on from here it goes to infinity and here it goes to negative infinity and as you can see the domain of sine of X equals to all the real values and the range of it is from 1 to minus 1 Okay, it goes between these two values, everything in between, but the domain of it, it goes toward infinity and minus infinity, okay? And I'm going to show you the graph of sine of x on this mode in a second. However, 
here, what you have to know is graph of sine of x or sine of t in our case looks like this. Okay? So this is about graph of sine. How about graph of cosine? Okay? So let's delete all this. So as we go from 0 to pi over 2, what happens to the x component of the distances that we make? Okay, so the x components go from, so go from 1, okay, to 0. So as I go from t being 0 to pi over 2, my x components go from 1 to 0. Okay, so they go from 1 to 0. Okay, so at pi over 2, it is 0. So let's choose a different color. Let's choose green. So they go like that. Okay. How about when I go from pi over 2 to pi? So I go from here to here. Well, my x components go from 0 to minus 1. So I go from 0 to minus 1. Okay, let's mark all of those. So from pi to 3 pi over 2, I go from minus 1 to 0. So from minus 1 to 0. And then I go from 0 to 1. From 0 to 1. Okay. So from pi over 2 to pi, so from pi over 2 to pi, I go from 0 to minus 1. So this is 0, this is minus 1. So at this point, I have to reach minus 1. So that is exactly what I'm going to reach. From pi to 3 pi over 2, so from here to here, my y component goes from minus 1 to 0. Okay. So from pi to 3 pi over 2, I go like that. And from 3 pi to 2 pi, I go like that. Okay, so roughly speaking, this is, I go like that. Okay, so roughly speaking, this is what the graph of cosine of x or t in our case looks like. It looks like this. Okay, and if I go more than 2 pi, I'll come down again, and then go up, and then come down, and then go up, and then come down. And here, I'll go like that. Okay? toward negative infinity right here and toward positive infinity right here. Okay, so again, my domain is all the real numbers or all the real values, and my range is between minus 1 and 1. Okay, so as you can see, the graph of sine and cosine look alike. However, the starting point are different. For here, I start at 0 for sine of x. However, for cosine, I start at 1. Okay, and when I end it, for sine of x, I end at 0. Okay, this is 0. However, for cosine of x, I end at 1. Okay, so this is what the graph of sine and cosine looks like. Let's check it out on Dismos. So this is Dismos. Let's graph sine of x. So this is the graph of sine of x. Okay, so as you can see, it starts from 0 and 0. So this is 0 and 0. It goes all the way to pi over 2. Okay, so right here, this is x equaling to pi over 2, y equaling to 1. It comes down, so when x equals to pi, your y will equal to 0. When x equals to 3 pi over 2, your y equals to minus 1. And when x equals to 2 pi, your y equals to 0. Okay, so when you make a full revolution on the unit circle, your y values go from 0 to 1 to 0 to minus 1 to 0. And that is basically how we graphed the sine of x function. Okay? Anything that comes after the full revolution is just a repetition. Okay, so if I add another half pi to the 2 pi, I'll get 5 pi over 2. As you can see, I will have the same y value. I will have 1, the same thing that I have right here. Okay, so let's mark the points again. This is 0 and 0, 2 pi over 2 and 1, pi and 0, 3 pi over 2 and minus 1, 2 pi and 0, and this is 5 pi over 2 and 1. Okay. So right here, what do you think it's going to be? Well, it's going to be 3 pi and 0. So if I add, okay, so where do I have 3 pi and 0, or where do I have y to be 0? Right here, okay, and here. However, for right here, if I add 2 pi to this point, I will reach 3 pi, and I'll have the same y value. Okay, so as you can see, the y values repeat themselves. Okay, so if we have a function like that, such that that repeats itself, then it's called a periodic function. Okay, so here, for example, if I evaluate f of 0, I'll get 0. If I evaluate f of pi over 2, I'll get 1. You will have a periodic function such that when you evaluate, for example, t, okay, you will get something. However, when you evaluate t plus a constant, you will get the same thing. Okay, so here if I evaluate pi over 2, I'll get 1. If I evaluate pi over 2 plus 
2 pi, I'll get 1 again. Therefore, this is a periodic function. Okay, and the positive number such that I added to my x value is such that the function it repeats itself. That positive value, okay, it is called a period. Okay, and I'm going to explain to you what a period is in a second. However, this is what the graph of sine of x looks like. In our case, it is sine of t because we make a distance of t on the unit circle. However, this program defines it as x. How about cosine of x? Well, cosine of x looks like this. As you can see, it starts at 1. If you put 0 into cosine of x, you'll get 1. And then it goes to pi over 2 and 0, and then pi and minus 1, and then 3 pi over 2 and 0, and then 2 pi and 1. At 2 pi, okay, it makes a full revolution, and it will give you a output of 1 for cosine of x. Okay, so anything or any value that we have after that is just a repetition of whatever we have got so far. Okay, so if you evaluate 5 pi over 2 into cosine, you will get 0. Okay, it is the same thing as making a full revolution and then adding half pi to it. Okay, you'll get the same value. So the terminal point for 5 pi over 2 and pi over 2 are the same thing. They are 0 and 1 x being 0 and y being 1. That means cosine is 0 and sine is 1. So as long as we are on dismos, what do you think is going to happen if I multiply cosine of x by 2? So if I put a 2 right here, so 2 times cosine of x, well, that's what's going to happen. Okay, so let's have cosine of x in front of us, of x, okay, and let's delete sine of x, okay. This is cosine of x. Originally, it was like that. Okay, so it became like this. So as you can see, this point is 0 and 1. So for cosine of x, the range is between 1 and minus 1, as we talked about. Okay, however, this cosine right here, this purple graph, the range is between 2 and minus 2. Okay, how is that possible? Well, when you multiply cosine and sine, okay, by a constant, your range is going to change. Okay, so for cosine of x, since right here we have a constant of 1, then we will have the range to be between 1 and minus 1. That means the greatest value that, will, that you will get for cosine of x, it will be 1, and the smallest value it will be minus 1. However, when you have a 2 right here, or when you multiply your cosine by a constant, whatever constant that you will have, then the greatest and smallest value will be that constant. Okay, so here the greatest value will be 2 and the smallest value to be minus 2. Okay, this distance that we have, so here from 0 to 2, that is called the amplitude. Okay, it is called the amplitude. So for the purple function, the amplitude is the absolute value of whatever number that we have right here. So the amplitude is 2. Okay, for the red one, the amplitude is 1. If I have minus 3 cosine of x, then this will be the graph of minus 3 cosine of x, okay? The green one. The greatest value that I will have for minus 3 cosine of x is, so it will be right here, it will be y equaling to 3 and y equaling to minus 3, okay? And the amplitude will be the absolute value of the constant that I have in front of the cosine. Therefore, it will be 3, okay? The amplitude is this distance between here and here, between the zero point and the highest point of the function, okay? So that is about the amplitude of a graph, specifically for trig functions and here for cosine and sine. Let's talk about that and let's talk about period of a function in our case for sine and cosine. So we know how the graph of sine of x in our case sine of t looks like for cosine of t. So to talk about the amplitude, if you have a graph, so let's say we have 0.5 sine of t, okay? And I'm asking you what is the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is whatever we have in front of the sine, okay? If we have a constant multiplied by sine or cosine, then whatever we have in front, that will be the amplitude. It will be the absolute value of that. Then the amplitude, amplitude okay, equals to 1 over 2, okay? If I have, <coughs> for example, minus 10 cosine of t, and I ask you what is the amplitude, well, it will be the absolute value of this, okay? Then the amplitude will equal to the absolute value of 
negative 10 equals to 10. Okay? And if you have it in front of you in your imagination, you know that the greatest value that we will get when you graph cosine of t or negative 10 cosine of t, it will be 10, and the smallest value will be negative 10. And for this one, the greatest value will be 0 0.5, and the smallest value will be negative 0 0.5. So it will be oscillating between 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5 for this function. You will know that the range will be between 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5. For this one, okay, for this one, it will be between negative 10 and 10. And the greatest value that I will get it will be 10, and the smallest value it will be negative 10. Okay, so that's it about amplitude. It's very, very easy. Let's talk about the period, okay, for sine and cosine. Okay. Okay, so talking about the period, okay, so as we saw from 0 to 2 pi, we don't have any repetition for sine of x. In our case, it is sine of t. However, after that, we have repetition. Okay, so we said that a function is periodic. If you have, so if I plug in sine of t, okay, I will get something. Suppose I will get x. However, if I have sine of t plus a constant plus k, in our case, k equals to 2 pi, okay, I will still get x, okay? I will still get the same thing, x being variables. It's not coordinate, so let's change it. Suppose we get m, okay? We will still get m, okay? So, for example, if I have sine of pi over 2, I will get, so I will get 1, okay? If I add pi over 2 to 2 pi, so sine of pi over 2 plus 2 pi, okay? it will be, so pi over 2 plus 2 pi, it will be equal to sine of 5 pi over 2. It will still equal to 1. Okay, so when I add 2 pi to any number that I have in the bracket, I will get the same value. Okay, that's why it's periodic. So the period for sine of t is 2 pi. Okay, after 2 pi, every value or the function repeats itself. Okay, sine of x repeats itself. The same goes for cosine of x. It will repeat itself after 2 pi. Okay, that's why we say that the period for sine of x and cosine of x is 2 pi. Okay, but not always they are 2 pi. Okay, it depends. Okay, so let's write that. Period of sine of t and cosine of t, okay, and I apologize, I mix sine of t and cosine of t with sine of x and cosine of x, because sine of x and cosine of x, they are the, let's say, the formal way we talk about sine and cosine, okay, but here, since we have the distance to b and t, we see sine of t and cosine of t, but they are the same thing. So the period of sine of t and cosine of t is 2 pi, okay, so after 2 pi, the function repeats itself, so sine of t and cosine of t, and we saw in the graph, so after 2 pi, so this green graph goes back like that, and the black graph goes up to 1, okay? And comes back, and go up, and come back, just so you know, so it does this, okay? So this depends, or the period of sine and cosine depends on what? Well, first of all, for you to know what is the period of sine and cosine, you look at the value that you have right here. So right here we have 1. So the equation is this. So the equation for period, okay, equals to 2 pi over. So suppose the constant that we have right here is k, then it will equal to 2 pi over k, okay? Since right here for sine of t, the constant equals to 1, that's why we have 2 pi over 1. It will be 2 pi. That's why the period is 2 pi. Okay, however, if the k does not equal to 1, actually it equals to, let's say, 4, okay, so if k equals to 4, then we have the period to be 2 pi over k, it would be 2 pi over 4, okay, it will equal to pi over 2, so that means after pi over 2, the function of sine, in this case, let's say, or cosine, repeats itself, okay, so not after 2 pi, after pi over 2, it will repeat itself, okay? If we have, instead of 4, if we have 1 over 2, if we have 1 over 2, then we would have 2 pi over 1 over 2, okay? 
So it will be 2 pi over 1 over 2. It will equal to 4 pi. Then in this case, the function repeats itself after 4 pi, not after 2 pi, not after pi over 2, after 4 pi. And depending on that, the graph of it will change. Okay, so let's look at that on this most. So here we have sine of x. As you can see, let's zoom in. The period of sine of x is between 0 and 2 pi. So this is 2 pi right here. After this, the function repeats itself. Okay, however, if we have, let's say, sine of 1 over 2x, okay, then the period changes. As we saw, the function repeats itself after 4 pi, okay? So, as you can see right here, let's zoom out a little bit. So, here, for the black function, okay, the function repeats itself after 2 pi. Okay, after 2 pi. However, for the red function, the function repeats itself after 4 pi. Okay, so depending on whatever you have in front of the x, okay, so you have a constant multiplied by x, if you want to find the period of the sine or cosine, then you have to plug in whatever you have in the equation of 2 pi over k. Okay, so whatever you have in front of it, suppose it is k, you'll plug it in into 2 pi over k, and then you will see the period. So in that period, you don't have the function to repeat itself. After that, you have the function to repeat itself when you are given sine or cosine. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. So example one. So if I give you example one. So if I give you y, okay, so or f of x equaling to 5 over 2 cosine of x over let's say 3 okay and I'm asking you to find me the amplitude and the period okay well the amplitude <coughs> the amplitude will equal to the absolute value of whatever we have right here so to equal to absolute value of 5 over 2 equal to 5 over 2 or 2 and a half okay the period equals to so here we have so let's dissect this here we have x over 3 it equals to 1 over 3 times x okay so the k right here equals to 1 over 3 and the equation for finding period is 2 pi over k so it will be 2 pi over 1 over 3 so it will equal to 2 pi divided by 1 over 3 equals to 2 pi times 3 equals to 6 pi. Okay, so the period is 6 pi. After 6 pi, 5 over 2 cosine of x over 3 will repeat itself. Okay, let me give you another example. So example 2. If we have f of x equaling to 5 sine of, let's say minus 5, minus 5 sine of 8x. What is the amplitude and what is the period? So the amplitude would be the absolute value of minus 5, so it equals to 5. Okay, so the function or the graph of it would look like this. This would be 5, this would be minus 5, meaning the highest point will be right here and the lowest point will be right here. Okay, and the period would equal to 2 pi over, what is k? Well, k equals to 8. 2 pi over 8. So it equals to pi over 4. So the function repeats itself after pi over 4. Okay? So that is basically about graph of sine and cosine, about amplitude and about period. Okay? With this, we come to the end of this lecture.